Hey there game developers, my name is Titan Hex and I'm here to teach you the introductory beginner course to RPG Maker MB. So I'm going to teach you how to create a new project and then I'm going to take you through some of the you know basics of the tools, what you're looking at on the screen and all that other stuff. So um, I have been doing this a while uh, and I have some awesome stuff to show you. Maybe you just picked up RPG Maker MV either last year or maybe recently and you just really want to get into it and start creating your first game. I'm going to take you through the steps to create an awesome first game. And we're going to begin first by, after opening up RPG Maker MV, hitting File and New Project. So you can hit Control plus N. This also works. Um, both methods are going to get you a new project. We're going to go ahead and create one for ourselves and this one uh, we'll just call it the tutorial project. You can obviously name yours whatever you feel like is appropriate. For me it's going to be a tutorial project just because that's what I'm teaching you guys. So it's going to load up all those awesome assets that it, the RPG Maker MV starts with. So it's going to give you a whole bunch of stuff like music, game, uh, characters, some plugins, some other stuff that um, you can use in order to create your first game. You can also find a whole bunch of stuff off the internet. Now, once the new project's been created, it'll load up this really easy default map. Um, it's going to just give you a start location right here, which is where this character is. The start location is basically where when you hit play test, which is this little button, or it can be found right here, or it can be accessed by control plus R. Uh, it, it's going to start the game off right here. So right now we have nothing going on. Um, let's go ahead and jump into sort of what we're looking at though. So this box here is going to be our map and this is how we edit, design, and create our map. How we create a whole bunch of stuff. What it looks like, the interactable parts of it, stuff like that. So a map is usually basically just sort of like a scene, a level. Uh, sometimes it can even be a menu. It can be a whole bunch of different things. It's up to us, basically, how we program it to determine what it, what it's like and what it does. So right now, this is basically just a level, and right now it's set to the world map. So over here is our palette. This palette allows us to draw on the map. So we just can start drawing some little things right away, maybe a desert area, maybe a rocky area. Who knows, it's really up to you how you set your map up. So, boom, just got a little little thing right here, just a small area. Um, right here is the palette, and over here is the different tabs of our palette. So different tabs can go all the way up to E, depending on the tile set we use. And we'll go into tile sets more later, but right now B is basically just sort of this tile right here. So we can just sort of put these together. Um, just neat little nifty things like this. Uh, maybe some crazy beanstalk sort of thing going on. Some trees, some pyramids, just whatever you want from this little palette. And we can throw some more on it. So one of the things to remember is that you can stack these on top of each other like so uh, whichever one you place first is always going to be the one that goes on top so when I put this one here I try to put something back behind it it's not going to work so I can just cl click back here and now this one's behind and this one's in front now one thing to remember is that if you try to put them right next to each other and then put another like say right up here down here it's going to start getting kind of funky uh, it's going to start overriding like especially right here so the way it works is that these two right next to each other um, will overlap but a third one cannot overlap so you can't have a third one trying to fit itself in it just doesn't work um, it only does two at a time so two overlaps maximum uh, after that it just doesn't work so keep that in mind and you should be good um, here is the region editor so the regions are more specific to encounters. We'll go more into them later. They can also be used for plugins. Certain plugins might use them. And they go all the way up to, geez, 255. So we can just start coloring in areas. You'll never see them um, when you're playing in the game. But 
you can designate regions to just do certain things and have certain things happen. So regions are very useful. Um, we won't worry about them right now. We'll go into those later. So we're also going to look over here at the map list. So this is a hierarchy of our maps, basically just a nice list of maps. We can create new maps over here by right clicking anywhere. Um, if I cl right click here, it'll create a sub map back under underneath this. Uh, it's just it keeps it organized. There's nothing special about where the map is that's going to change anything. So if I create it here, it's going to be right next to this one. If I create it here and do new, it's going to be right under it. Um, this is just basically our map hierarchies. So nothing, nothing really big. Next, we're going to go to uh, right up here, our file, uh, our basically our tool, toolbar. I guess we'll call it our file bar. Um, on Mac, it might be like way higher up, but right now it's right here. So this is for Windows. Uh, we can access new projects, open projects, close or save projects. Deployment is good for when we want to start getting our game out to others. Uh, Steam management is just how we're going to sort of manage it on Steam. It's, it's not a big deal. These two, we, we, uh, we'll go into those later. So just don't even worry about them right now. Um, these ones are very useful. You'll want to remember that. Uh, edit, so we can undo things we've done. So if I go here and I start coloring like crazy, decide later on, you know, I really don't want didn't want to color it in like I did, bam, I can undo it. So edit, undo, I can also uh, cut, copy, and paste. So I'll go into that in just a sec, we won't worry about it. So then I can go here, go into the mode, that's right here. So I can use these to switch between event mode where I create interactable objects for the map, the area. And over here I just paint in and create uh, tiles that the player can run into and things like that. So this is really useful to create characters and things like that that'll be on the map that you can interact with. So here is the map editor and that's how we have access to these. So this is the pencil tool and we can use that to sort of pencil in little things like this. Uh, you saw me playing with that earlier. This is the box tool. It just lets me create rectangles so I can create a nice little row here um, uninterrupted. And then I can do the circle. So you're going to notice right here that the circle is very sort of, I'm going to call it square. So it's, it's a very square sort of circle. Unfortunately, the way this works is it operates on tiles, and there's really nothing you can do about that. There, there are methods that can get around it. There are tile sets that get around the sort of squareness of the tile set, the default one. But for now, there's nothing we can really do about it. If you want, you can try parallax mapping. Uh, it's a little more difficult, and we'll get into that later. But for now, we're not even going to worry about it. So next, we go to the event mode. Uh, I'll go into events later. Um, right now, we won't worry about it. So then we have the fill tool right here. This fills in uh, just sections. You should be familiar with this if you've ever played with MS Paint. It's a pretty simple little tool that just fills in an area. Um, the shadow tool creates a shadow. Uh, if you're using a cer certain tile sets, uh, shadows will be created automatically near walls and other objects. Uh, this one allows us to create shadows manually. So now I can just create shadows. They're usually one quarter of a tile in size. I can also remove shadows using the tool by just re-clicking a shadow and just erasing it. So next we have our zoom tools. If we're using a really big map, it can be really helpful to use the zoom tool and just start painting in um, the more complex parts of a map. Uh, we can also zoom back in and just go really in depth and look really closely at the map. Uh, we can go back to the one-to-one -one ratio. So finally, we have this here uh, is our tools and sort of our game part. So our tools are the database, which I'll go into the database later. It's really complex. Um, that's going to be a separate tutorial. Uh, it, it, it gives us sort of the classifications, the rules, a lot of other things about our, our game that we can sort of manipulate, skills, abilities, or our general RPG fare, uh, characters and things like that. So it's really good for that. Uh, we can 
set up monsters and monster groups and stuff like that. Then we have the plugin manager. Now this is really the rules of our, our game, the way the software operates. Um, we can add so much depth and so much amazing things to our game using the plugin manager. We'll go more into that later. Uh, you usually have to download plugins off the internet or create them yourself. Then we have the sound test. The sound test allows us to sort of play sound, uh, play music. Uh, we can change the pitch of the music and pan of the music and just the volume and just sort of hear different versions of the music. Uh, it's pretty neat. So say a quick battle. We can really slow it down or speed it up to create tension. So we can speed it up, create tension, do stuff like that. Uh, we can set maybe it plays more on the right speaker. Uh, maybe it plays more on the left speaker. So different things like that we can set up for the music. Um, we can have a background sound. So uh, maybe it sounds like drips, rivers, quakes. Uh, we can also play with the pitch and everything for that. Uh, music effects. So these are just basically sound effects and like fanfare, like organ would be like bum 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 so something like that very simple neat little fanfare things and then sound effects are like dog bark or door slam or bite blind things like that that we can use to create different parts of our game so that's very useful uh, stuff like that can really help uh, sort of make variance between each sound and each piece of music we can make it sound quicker faster slower we can change the tension the drama um, we can make one sound uh, more dramatic than another. Just quick, simple manipulations. There's some cool stuff that we, we can do. Next, we have the event searcher. So this little guy allows us to debug certain issues real quick or find certain events that we need to edit or change. Right here, super useful. The next one is the resource manager. So here we can import, delete, remove, and preview a lot of stuff. We can grab DLC and start downloading DLC into our projects. Um, very useful. So if we check out some of these battles, we can or battle backgrounds, we can check out some faces, things like that. Uh, very useful. Import, export, delete, etc. Allow us to manipulate our data that's in our folder. Um, change our assets and then we have the character generator so I'm not gonna go too into this a lot of people usually will open it up and start playing with it right away it's something that you really should play with yourself and most people usually have so much fun using this that they it becomes very intuitive so I'm not too worried about it um, close that up and lastly of course is the play test so we can do a quick play test and sort of play our game Basically, this is the the a nutshell of a, the, the engine when we first open it up, what stuff we have right at our disposal. So I'm going to go into creating a new map and a editing our current map, as well as sort of drawing and doing certain things, a little bit more about this side of the editor. I'm going to go more into that next. So I appreciate you li listening, uh, learning, and just starting up your journey into game making. If you have any questions, if you have comments, if you want me to do a certain tutorial or you just want to say, hey, great job, I always appreciate it. So please like, subscribe, just leave a comment. If you need help with anything, just ask. If you need uh, maybe some ideas, resources, stuff like that, always just feel free to ask. Even if I can't answer you, if I'm not able to answer, if I just end up not be answering you, maybe someone else will. So it's always a plus to sort of engage that community. and I encourage you guys to do just that. Uh, with that, thank you and join me in the next tutorial.